Now, if you look here, this part here is now changed into software instrument choices. So it's gone from loops to library automatically. And I'd like you to choose a keyboard, and you can choose electric pianos if you like, and I've chosen funk piano for mine, but you don't have to choose that. Making sure your keyboard is already plugged in. And now, you can just demonstrate and see how it's working. You can see when you press your keyboard here, the MIDI information comes up at the bottom here. So C2 means it's C and it's octave two. So if I do the C above, it should say C3. Magic, and C4 above, and C5, there you go. And it will do all those things for you. So, now you need to demonstrate about how to record in. Very, very simple. Um, you'll need to explain first that there's a count in of one bar that gives you four clicks before you start to ensure that you start at the right tempo. Now, when I'm asking you to record something in, I'm not looking for a masterpiece. In fact, I'm not looking for anything in particular, apart from the fact that just make sure you play pretty much in time, even if it's just one per beat. Nothing flashy, you're just showing how to record in very, very simply. So, to give you a demonstration, I'll just click here. Here we go. And there we go. And I've just done four bars worth. I've just kind of recorded something in very, very simply and it makes it uh, very, very easy to show you what to do for the rest of it. So, I've got my region here. The first thing I want to do is quantize it, and you'll need to explain what quantizing is, and just to make it even simpler and break it down for you, so quantizing is about moving the notes to the nearest value. So that means that it moves it to the notes, to the nearest note, sorry, let me explain that a little bit better for you. It moves it to the nearest part where the music sounds like it can be in time. So in our case, what I'd like to do, and you should do the same for this, click on your region like that, go to quantize, and click on one eighth note. So if I double click on it now, you can see that we've got our notes perfectly in time. Now, what you'll need to also explain is how you can actually use the notes quite creatively with the mouse. So you move it up and down, change the pitch. You can also change the position of your notes. And you can also change the length of the notes. Now, you can also copy and paste the notes, doing the same thing as you would with the extra regions. And you can make all lots of different interesting things. I'm going to undo that bit, but you can see, you see you can make it quite interesting. You can also treat your regions in the same way that you would with the audio, cut them, copy and paste them. So. Doesn't sound great musically, but that's not what you're here to demonstrate. You're just here to demonstrate that you can use it in a musical way. So you've demonstrated how to change the timing, using quantizing, you've copied and pasted notes, you've changed the pitch, you've changed the length of notes. One more thing, you'll need to change the velocity of them as well. Make sure your mouse is in the bottom half of the actual screen for this. Make sure it's in what we call the piano roll, this part here, just anywhere beneath this line here. Press escape and you'll get the velocity tool and drag that up and down on one note. And you can see it makes the note quieter and louder. Changes colour, and you can see the length of the line changes inside it as well. So, just makes it quite interesting. If you like, if you want to be really fancy, you can solo your actual track here, so you can show how that works. So, if we go to bar one, for example, on here, and change a few notes, and you can really demonstrate how it works. You can see those two there are much, much quieter. So. Once you've done that, only one more thing to do is to demonstrate some effects. So I'm going to show you how to input some effects on your music. Very, very simply, you'll see here on your track here, you've got this one selected and you've got this here. This is called the channel strip. All you need to do is go to the next empty box here, hold down your mouse on it and then go to delay, still holding down your mouse, don't let go, go to stereo delay and then go to stereo and you'll get this coming coming up. And this is basically your delay. A delay is a type of echo. It makes things sound a bit more three-dimensional. So <clears throat> what you can do is hold down 
on this menu here and it gives you lots of different settings. So let's start with one eighth note, you can see how that sounds and demonstrate this. So if you play it now, Okay, and you can show how different ones affect it in different ways. So then choose something completely different. So something without one eighth in it at all, let's say dual one half note dotted. And you can see how it's got a different effect. The echoes are less um, frequent. So let's try uh, this one, last one. little bit more subtle. But you need to show about how to add effects, you can say that you use those in your music. Now, finally, you need to show about how to actually mix your music. So to mix your music, you go to the window menu, go to mixer, and here you've got all your different audio channels and MIDI all in one place, and you can choose the volume levels of each one. And you can also choose the pan settings. Pan stands for panorama, it actually comes from the world of film. When something pans left to right, usually use that in a film context, but in music it's used as well. So if we pull this all the way down to there, it will make all the sound from that channel go into or come out of the left speaker or your left headphone. And here for the right. So at the moment it's right in the middle. So you need to drag down to the left and drag up for the right. That's what pan is. You need to be able to say what pan is. You've got your uh, you've got your sound uh, being you've got your volume here that you know, if you need to turn anything up and down, you can do that there. And you can also solo your channels here, or you can mute them here if you want to hear something without being distracted by a different sound. Um, and you can exit that window and you'll still have this one left. The last thing you need to say is about how to save your work. You press, go to File menu, Save As, and when you've done that, just make sure that when you save it, point out that you, when you save everything, when you save your work, I should say, it saves everything. So it doesn't just save what's in Logic, it saves all the sounds. So EXS Instruments, that's your funk piano sound and EXS Samples, that's the actual sound source behind your piano sound. It's all the data for your actual music is stored in a folder called a project folder. This means that if you want to take your work to a, another studio or to a friend's house and they also have Logic, they'll be able to set it up and even if they don't have the same sounds installed as you, because it's saved, saved in this folder, Assuming you've got that folder saved on your memory stick, it'll be able to find it and load up your work with all the same sounds. So just make sure you name it something memorable. So I'm just going to call mine Mr. Cell Demo and press save and point out that once you saved it, I'm replacing my one because I did one earlier, but you won't have that. When you save it, it'll come up there with a the new name. So then you saved it. You can then quit logic by going to there and then you can tell me uh, that you finished. If you, don't, if you do all those things, explaining as you go and making it a musical result, then you'll get a distinction no problem. The more input that I have to give you, the lower the mark I give you.